Alright, hi guys. So I'm going to make a tutorial video on how to put a um, aircraft model or any model really into a wind tunnel using CFD or Autodesk CFD. So first off, um, I'm using Fusion. You don't have to. You can use Inventor or something, but I'll be using Fusion for this video. So say you've got your aircraft, right, that you want to put in a wind tunnel. First thing you're going to need to do is make sure that you need to put a box around it. And this is this box will become our uh, wind tunnel airspace, if you will. Um, currently, I just have the material set to glass. Um, so you can actually see the aircraft inside. The dimensions of the box don't really matter. You just need to make sure that there's like at least that much space in all directions on either side. Um, yeah, so once you've got that, you can go ahead and export the file. Uh, you need to change your file type to uh, to a step file and save it in a place that you can remember. I'm going to save it in this folder. Okay, now once that's saved, you can go into CFD. We're going to hit this new button, browse for a model. We're going to hit that guy, open design study. Um, for the purposes of this video, we'll do F86 tutorial. So the design study is basically the um, the top level folder of everything you're going to do. So you're going to have everything that's related to this uh, airframe, if you will, you want to do it out of this one. So as soon as you load in, you're going to have um, this window that will ask you to merge edges. Uh, it's not particularly necessary, but you can do it if um, it's not bad. So we're just hit merge. If for some reason you don't want it to merge edges, um, you can just hit the X button and it'll be fine. So now we're loaded into CFD. We've got the box, but we don't see the plane inside. If we want to see the plane inside, uh, we're going to have to find the component. Right. So I called it the tunnel in Fusion. Um, so we can hit hide, and that just hides it away. It's completely gone, but it's also unselectable and we're going to want to select that later. So I'm just going to actually show it, but I'm going to make it an outline. So I can still select it, but I can also see the plane inside. That just makes me happy. Okay, now that we've got that, we need to give materials to everything in here. So I'm going to hit the tunnel first, hit edit, and make sure that it's a fluid. Yes, I want a fluid, and we're trying to do a wind tunnel test, so our material will be air. We're going to hit apply, that brings it up there. Now, then that means everything else is still unassigned. So what we can actually do is hit edit there. We'll change that to um, a solid. And aluminum is fine. Um, the, uh, the type of material only really matters for um, thermal testing. So aluminum is fine for us. We'll hit aluminum. OK. Another thing is I've got a sort of like a blocking element halfway through where the um, engine is supposed to be so there is not a clear path through if for some reason you need to you in your CAD have these blocking elements that need to be um, opened up find that component so I'm gonna it's one of these it will turn red you can edit it and you can set that to air as well so you can have multiple air elements um, and it'll be fine so I'll hit that Okay, so we've got two air elements and everything else is aluminum. Great. Should be good. Yeah. All right. The next thing that you're going to want to do is set some boundary conditions. So this basically defines um, how your wind tunnel is going to run. So I'm just going to hit that tool, select the front edge, edit that velocity. So this is just how fast the air is moving around your plane, or rather, or or equivalently, how fast your plane is moving through the air. I'm going to do miles an hour. I'm going to set that to 40. Make sure you hit apply, not just enter. All right, and you can see that it pops up down there, 40 miles an hour. Okay. Now for the rear, we're just going to hit edit again. But typically for the exit side of a wind tunnel, you can just select pressure and set to zero. The units don't matter since it's just zero. Okay, that's pretty good for wind tunnel. Those are your boundary conditions. Uh, deal with that. Okay. 
now that you've got that set up, you're pretty much good to go. Now, um, initial conditions, that doesn't matter too much here. We can hit the solve button. Oh, you can take care of your own mesh, but the solve function will automatically take care of meshing. So we're not gonna do that. Um, iterations to run. So that basically is saying how long you want your simulation to run. Obviously, the more iterations you have, the more accurate it becomes, but it's gonna take even longer to run. Uh, I actually, I've seen people who run 500, I've run 100 for most of mine, and it's fine. So I'm gonna do, with, do 100. Physics, we're in a wind tunnel. So we're gonna change incompressible to compressible. And temperature, I just like to run with 20 degrees Celsius, so I'm going to set that to 20. Uh, otherwise, you're good to go there. You can go ahead and hit the solve button now. And so now it's gonna take a little while to get started. It's gonna run a whole bunch of stuff. So you can see it generates the mesh. We could have done that there, but the solver automatically does it. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. But once that is done, you're gonna see the convergence plot down here. It's gonna pop up and yeah, I'm just gonna wait a bit. Okay, so now I've finally got the simulation up and running. You can see that it's plotting out a whole bunch of these um, variable quantities and it's pretty unstable right now, but hopefully with enough iter iterations it will all flatten out and that's what it means by converging. Ideally you wanna have almost all the values flatlining to have a very accurate simulation, but as long as they're like approximately flat, it's, it's fine enough for um, just beginner or basic analysis. I'm going to hit the stop button real quick. Okay. So these kinds of simulations, or at least for my settings, I've found that they take anywhere from like 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. So um, be prepared, you know, to be here for a while. Okay, I'm going to close this and open up a file that I've already got all the simulation data in, just so we don't have to wait another hour. And it's basically the same simulation, I've just already run it. And uh, heads up, I'm running a quad core i5 4690K processor um, clocked at around 3.8 gigahertz. So obviously if you're running this on a laptop, um, good luck, you might be here for maybe like two or three hours. All right, so now that this is loaded in, you can see that on my kind of sidebar, I've got a lot more stuff. So basically, um, under the design study, which we called F86 tutorial, I have it as F86 Mark 3A, you can have multiple designs. Um, so in each design, you can basically have like, maybe one of them has bigger elevators, one of them has bigger wings, um, but you can classify it under that. And each one of these scenarios is, you can think of it as like a different wind tunnel setup. So the one that's identical to the tutorial that we did is this guy. So if you hit material, that'll change what the material looks like, but we're looking to see our results. So hit down here. Okay, so I've already got a couple already turned on, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete those so I can go through setting them up with you guys. All right, so just like I did for the materials earlier, I set the tunnels as outlines. I set the aircraft body itself as transparent and also a lighter blue, just so you can see the like details and shading just a little bit better. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is a wall calculator. Um, this will help us see what's the lift and drag on this aircraft. So I'm going to hit the double check marks that selects everything. Then I'm going to deselect all the edges of our wind tunnel. We don't want to see the forces on the wind tunnel, right? We only want to see the forces on our aircraft. Go ahead and check the force box. I'm going to change it to Newtons because I like Newtons. Um, yeah. 
and you can go ahead and hit calculate. Now this is going to give all the forces on every single component in on the aircraft. Uh, well, that might be useful. We're more interested in things at the bottom. So we can hit the summary. And so we can see that this one has a two point f a drag coefficient of 2.5 newtons, or rather as 2.5 newtons of drag, uh, 1.5 newtons of lift. You can ignore this one. This is kind of just from, uh, you know, randomness. It's, you know the aircraft's supposed to be symmetric, so that's supposed to be zero. We can take a look at the convergence plot for this one. Honestly, I think that I should have ran this for maybe another 50 or another 100 iterations, but you can see how it starts off terribly, and you know, it, it gets better with time. Yeah, so take, take all your um, results with a grain of salt. Yeah. Alright, so that's pretty useful for basic stuff, but we also kind of want you may want to see how air flows oops how your air flows around your aircraft so one of the tools you can do is the plane tool so we're going to hit add and i think by default it just gives us that one and this the default one also just gives you the velocity in magnitude um, color wise so uh i don't know we don't need to do any of that, so that's pretty cool. But the aircraft is kind of getting in the way, so in order to get a better view, I'm just going to hide that real quick. Also hide that. What did I do? Oh, oops, I hit materials. Um, yeah, make sure you don't get them confused. I'm gonna hide this a while to regenerate and that gives us a much cleaner view so we can see there's a low pressure zone in my electronics bay uh, low pressure obviously behind the ducting some low pressure behind our control surfaces and a little behind the cowling so that's that's um i mean the uh, canopy so that's pretty cool uh, what you also may want to see is actually the directionality of the flow so i'm going to go ahead and select my front view I want to try to get a good idea of how the air flows near the across the whole length. So I'm going to create, hit traces, add. I'm going to click once to start the thing. So all these red dots is where a trace or a smoke trail, if you will, is going to start from. I click again, and that's now it's going to go into 2D kind of thing. Uh, don't put too many. If you put too many, you could easily crash your computer. Um, so I, I think that's I think that's a good amount. I do that. That's going to generate all these traces. So you can actually see that um, because of the low pressure zone behind the canopy, it kind of pulls up the flow. Especially that one, you can see it's pulled up behind the canopy. You can observe the flow inside the thrust tube or so the path you see gets bent up because of the wing in the middle, goes through your duct, out the back. Pretty cool stuff. Um, you can see it's got a little vortice is going. Yeah, that's especially useful. If I, let's see, actually, if I, I'm gonna hit remove to delete those traces. If I start my traces further up, Still not quite. Sometimes you can get lucky with your traces and because of this low pressure zone, I've had a couple traces sometimes, they get curled up and back and you can really, if you see some of these, um, especially for aircraft design I guess, if you see these air traces start to reverse direction, you know that there is, you're losing a lot of thrust towards you got a big drag zone, so those are things you might want to fix. So with these two tools, or three tools, the wall calculator with the traces and the planes, you can get a pretty good um, amateur sense of wind tunnel testing for RC aircraft. Um, thanks, guys. See ya.